This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Transformations with Tara Sutphin. Tara Sutphin is the author of Blame It on Your Past Lives, Soul Agreements, and The Abenda Chronicles. Grammy-nominated audios, videos, and MP3 series. You can find these MP3 series now at TaraInsight.com. Morning, Tara. Good morning, Jason. Jason is the voice of over a million ohm recordings throughout the world. And um, welcome. He is my guest and co-host on Transformations with Tara. So welcome, everybody. Jason, How How how's you? your week been? Uh, it's been productive. Mm-hmm. I, I did a, uh, a, a seminar in Japan uh, over, yes. over the weekend. And, yes. uh, and just uh, from that, it's like uh, there's, there's more seminars that are, are planned. And, and they're, they're really intense ones. You know, they're, they're ones where, where I use like meditation uh, along with tarot reading, doing individual um, uh, t- tarot readings. Almost like if you went to a, a gallery reading there, if you were just part of an audience and I, I just like point at you and say, okay, this card's for you. And then, you know, just give a, a, a whole uh, uh, talk on, on that one card for that person. And, uh, and it's in Japanese. So, so I'm, do it for me now and do it in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like my Japanese is, is not so good. Um, so, so I, I work with a translator and, you know, so, so it's just this interesting back and forth, right? It's like mm-hmm. one gets into a, a flow of, of the, of the translation of, so that it's, uh, you know, the, the translator is a bridge and, and you have to, respect that bridge it's like you take one step at a time on that bridge so that your your message is that it lands you know that it can uh be understood and that uh you know that you get to the other side of of that bridge and and can you know potentially be a catalyst for someone to take that message and and start to incorporate that in their life so 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 that was like really fascinating but it opened up like this whole new um, uh, all these opportunities for other seminars and, and classes uh, over the summer mm-hmm. and so it, it's um, you know my if I thought my life was busy now it, it's going to be <laughs> more and more busy upcoming <laughs> oh my gosh that's great though hey show the book <clears throat> and in the book you know it's uh the the magic channel tarot reading with the tarot, tarot wizard mm-hmm. um I you know I've had like some amazing response with the the people that I've shared it with just you know uh on on Facebook the social medias uh sold a lot of copies and and uh I I posted something recently because you know I I haven't really seen that before with any of my stuff where you know people will receive an album or so and then take a photo of it or picture with them with it but they've been doing this with this book they, they've been receiving it and then it's like they've been snapping a photo of it and, and posting it on Instagram and, and Facebook. And so I, I made this collage of I love the collage and I our our, our friend, you know, Christine is, is like, you know, she's she's prominent because she's like brave enough to show her face with the, I love Christina. Yeah. Yeah. My and little uh, baby mystic. She yeah. uh what i call her so so she's kind of the the, the center of the the collage there but but uh, all, all these different like variations of you mm-hmm. know it coming right out of the package and people excited you know they're, i, I would have loved everybody's good. face in there you know everybody should put their face in with their book that's fun right that was really fun i loved it <laughs> i mean if, if they're outing themselves you know publicly <laughs> you know as <laughs> as tarot readers because it's of the fabulous tarot book the, the, the social stigma right. of being a tarot reader <laughs> okay. no it's it's mm-hmm. absolutely okay and you know part part of the the energy of uh you know writing a book like like the one that i wrote is to demystify uh you know parts of it where it it, it isn't like a stigma you know to 
uh, to, to get a tarot read is it can be like just a counseling session. You know, it's like uh, someone just looking at a part of their life and it's like, you know, what, 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 what do I need to do? What can I do? And, and so, you know, you explore, you talk about it and to uh, look at potentials and, and see if you're ready to take on, you know, a, a certain direction in, in your life. It, it's uh, it, it can be very profound and it doesn't have to be all like just, you know, candles and incense and, you know, so, so mystical. I've, I've had some of my best readings in, in a Starbucks, you know, where we're just kind of sitting on a, on a table and it's just like, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be in that, uh, that environment where it's like, you don't start to work the crowd. <laughs> the there starbucks are, crowd there are always people who are like hmm, what's going on there but and and you know it's like uh always have cards ready you know like your your business cards to hand out to people it's like um, right you know it can be like a psychic fair <laughs> if you like uh if you work it right all right um but you know so, some readings they, they can be pretty intense and it's like you know once you're done with it it's like okay now i'm just gonna go drink my coffee and like go go relax and I don't want to have to be on for everybody now it's like it was the people that come up and it's like oh pick a card for me <laughs> it's like mm, it's not we're not at the carnival right <laughs> <laughs> right right I get like a lot of that but yeah. just like Jacks, could you pick a card for me yeah yeah you know, I do take appointments you could have your whole uh, everything <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah. Hey, our guest is coming in. What? Hey, what? James. Hey. Oh, finally. <laughs> and the scary part is, I used to be a computer programmer. <laughs> uh, it's all right. If we know. We know. That. We know the ups and downs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, James, Thanks for having me here. Yeah. yeah. And so he goes by Jim and by James. Is <laughs> um, Jim, yeah. First name. yeah, but your book has James on it, so if you're gonna find his book, it's James. We're going correct, yes. So, um, the title of the book is Time Once Again Evolution of the Spirit. So, welcome yes, back. welcome, thanks. Back. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Yeah, that uh, is technology. Uh, I'm telling you, yeah, so, I'm sorry, okay. what, what? yeah, this is Jason. And Jason is the Ohm Tarot. Hi, Jason. Hello, Jim. How are you? He's also Good. a clinical hypnotherapist and a reverend. Yeah. So he's just today. I, I, and he's my brother, actually. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So or, or Tara is my sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and yeah. you, uh, Jason, you have the beard just to distinguish the two of you? You know, right. you know what? It does distinguish us <laughs> as far as. <laughs> There's not a lot of mistakes made. When we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so um, you're in Wisconsin. Right now, currently, yes. Yes. Uh, I have a, a small place here, and I bought property down in the uh, northern part of Florida. Where I plan to have a hangar and and my another home. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? That's going to be so great. That sounds like a fun adventure. Uh, it's a uh, whole different system of doing things down there. Yes. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so now, what what um, made you decide to write your book? Uh, I don't, there wasn't like one moment where I went, ah, I'm going to write a book. Uh, I ever, even when I was in probably grade school, I um, always wrote, if I heard something that kind of re resonated, I would write it down, you know, so I would remember it. And then I would come up with my own. Anyway, long story short is I, I just wrote a whole bunch of notes and never really knew what I was going to do with it. And uh, finally hit a point where I thought, you know, I should consolidate these. <clears throat> and I, the process started. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, fun. Fun. So, um, so, yeah, here's the book. 
time once again. Every and and that door is actually set there. I, I didn't Photoshop that in. <laughs> oh, it, really? That that doors. So the portal is there. Well, uh, that was uh, a pond that I had on my property, and uh, I dragged that door down there and set it up, propped it up, took the photographs I wanted, and the very next day it snowed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get some snow pictures too? That's nope. hilarious. <laughs> no, because in Wisconsin, nobody's that interested in snow. Exactly. <laughs> well, we were raised in Alaska, so we know. Oh, okay. <laughs> we know. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Snow, is, snow for sure is snow. <laughs> yeah. And it's beautiful. You're so excited in October when it starts to snow and November and December is pretty. But January and February, you're ready. Out. Oh. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, that's when I started. Yep. Uh, I tease that when the last colored leaf falls to the ground in the fall, that's when I leave. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's why you have a place in Florida. Right. Exactly. Right. When I was younger, I used to always say, I don't mind the snow, but I hate the cold. And as I've gotten older, I found that I don't like either one of them. <laughs> um, it, it, you. you know, I, like uh, Tara said, it's you know, the first snowfall is wonderful, mm -hmm. but, but that wears off real quickly. You know? Right. <laughs> right. Right. But it is so beautiful when it starts to happen. And oh, the first time. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I know a lot of people who love snow and it, and that's the thing, you know, if you really love snow, then that's great because, yeah. you, you know, somebody has to. <laughs> and i love it but i don't live in it and but i did have a house in it for many for 26 years i did yeah. have a second home that was yeah i had one in um lake arrowhead and then one in big bear which was even higher elevation i was at seven thousand feet and it's notable wow wow as a pilot, that kind of elevation sucks because anything over 10,000 feet, you need uh, to have oxygen on board. So at, if you're taking off at 7,000 feet, you can only climb to 3,000. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, they did have an airport up there. And oh, yeah, because uh, yeah, my gym was uh, connected. It was in an airplane hangar, which I loved because they could open the doors. <laughs> and I like the concept, yeah. It was a great, it was a great gym. So it was and, a combination uh, gym slash airport? It was, <laughs> airport? it was on the airport grounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're, we're, talking, we're talking small town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> small town. Right, okay. there's a Cinnabon, a gym, and then an airport. I don't know. No, Cinnabon's, I think, in... in um, Lake Arrowhead. Oh, of course. It wasn't yeah. in, it wasn't even in Big Bear. I don't think so. <laughs> Starbucks would be more uh, uh suitable. You know, yeah. they're on every corner. So yeah, you oh have, yeah. Yeah. You Not done... that I frequent Starbucks. I, I sent something to, uh, funny to my friends this morning, but yeah, I don't frequent Starbucks. <laughs> it's like you, Jim, have done a yep. lot of stuff, a lot of different <laughs> things. Yeah. Uh, like, I have. Um Part of it is, um, uh, I, I was raised where if you wanted something, you found a way to do it. And a lot of the things I did were, uh, well, for one thing, I was searching for uh, my purpose. Uh, I just, I always felt that um, we're, we're here for a reason. And the other uh thing that allowed me to do all these different things was I never had a family. I, I was married for a while, but I, I, I didn't, you know, all my friends were putting all their time and, and money and energy into raising a family. And I was, uh, I didn't have that burden. I, I don't want to say burden. Uh, I, I didn't have that uh, where I, I had to provide for a family, you know, I, I could, I could go out and risk and, and do different things. Right. Res responsibility is maybe yeah, a better word. That, that's the right. word. Yeah. Yeah. And I always okay. knew that, uh, uh that having kids was a daunting experience, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're yours for life. You know, they so. are yours for life. 
Yeah. I've enjoyed mine. My, my Oh, I, I loved kids. I, I even dated a, a girl that had four uh, from eight to 18, but I knew they were going home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <clears throat> You know, it, it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, so you were able to then to take yeah. your free time and, and then, uh, yeah, and you, you know, all of these different things that, that you were doing. Yeah. And a lot of one thing sometimes tied into the next, you know, uh, for instance, I became a pilot because I went skydiving. And the part of the, the the experience that scared me was the plane ride. And it was because I didn't know what what the plane was doing. And I didn't know if I should be uh, worried or not. And I know someone called me a control freak one time. And I said, yeah, when my life is in the balance, I trust myself more than anyone else. Right. And, it, and it, it, it may not be the uh the truth all the time but it gives me at least a false sense of security <laughs> <laughs> right that false sense of security is good if you know how no. to, you know yeah, if, yeah. didn't read a man would to actually land the plane <laughs> yeah i would I, I would rather have myself uh in control and uh and die rather than just trust it to someone else <laughs> right hmm. That's interesting. Well, I wonder what, what, um, now did you, um, look into that, you know, like once, um, you know, time once again, did you look back at like maybe past lives, like where that would come from, where you'd like to fly or that you needed, um, or you needed control flying? Uh, wait, can you ref say that again, please? Yeah. Well, like, you know, if, if you, I mean, the first thing that came into my mind was world war II and being either on the ground or in the air with the plane. And so you wanted to know how to, how to um, handle it. Yeah. You don't yeah. want somebody else being, you know. You know, uh, I wanted to know, uh, I tended to be the, the person closest to the door uh, when we went skydiving. And I did that intentionally because if there was an issue, I didn't want to be fighting other people to get out the door. <laughs> right. Well, I so preservation. That, yeah. I always know yeah. that I'm in good enough shape that I could like, I could like seat hop easy. Yeah. Yeah. So whereas, you know, not everybody can do that, but you know, you have to be in shape for that. Yeah. Very, and this I is always true. think that, you know, like where's the exit? If I had yeah. to, where do yeah. I go from there? Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's okay to be safety conscious. I'm not paranoid, but you know, right. I, um, you know, but, uh, I, uh, but I devise a plan because I've had horses all my life. So I know that you have to have some plans. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just common sense says, okay, I'm here. You know, where do I, in, in case of a, a, a problem, you know, where do I go? Mm, right 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 so, uh, my, yeah. like, i'm first and <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <out>. <laughs> exactly <laughs> let's go yeah well it's just that you don't waddle maybe right you know some people are paralyzed by fear i've i've seen it a few times don't like to be responsible when there's an emergency but i act upon well, it right away yeah when other people do not uh, there can be so, so many people around people either ignore it or they don't know what to do and they freeze uh when i used to help teach scuba diving uh we would have on occasion someone who panicked but also uh we had some that they call it a passive panic it's they just freeze mm -hmm. and there was one woman in particular that we had her down at 30 feet and she froze and but she, she held her breath well you can't bring her to the surface from 30 feet because you'll expand her lungs and and all that and what the instructor ended up having to do was he punched her in the stomach so she had to exhale and then we could bring her up but a passive panic people they'll just stare at you you know and you can just tell they're not there <laughs> right right they went into panic mode. yeah yeah 
Yeah. Interesting that they did that. That's an interesting way. They well, you know, really make her it, expand her yeah. lungs. Yeah, you know, uh, at, at in in scuba diving, every thirty feet you're under another what we call an atmosphere of pressure. So at thirty feet, she had twice the amount of air in her lungs as she would have at the surface. So if you bring her up, uh, you do lung damage. You know. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's a, it's well, a big lung thing. lung damage is the worst thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Wow, that, that's so just Jason, really really interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Now, yeah. uh, where do you live? Um, yeah, in, in Los Angeles, I live in in Malibu. And oh, oh, I, hard, I, hard life. <laughs> well, you know, I don't, I don't surf at all, so you know, I'm, I'm considered uh, odd. <laughs> well, uh, the air park, yeah, the air park where I bought uh, my property, uh, you know, for the, it's on, it's adjacent to the runway, and uh, there are people in the air park that have no interest in flying they just like the area <laughs> right. you know? okay yeah you know and it's on the swanee river so they they take advantage of that yeah well i love the ocean i, I love looking at the oh, ocean. i, I, I love can... the environment of it but i, yeah. I yeah. rarely go in um you know it's it's uh you know watching the dolphins watching the whales that that's amazing uh, neat. Um, yeah all my kids too they never i mean William uh, did ice hockey instead of surf and then but he became a great surfer but he was like 28 when he, he decided to get into it and, and then, that's old right yeah, for they, surfing oh my god yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a great artist so he started painting champions surfboards so oh, you know, the man. different surfboards they used in their runs and everything they'd show the art when they won their you know the surfing stuff but yeah, so that's what uh, he did. But they have, and then my other two, they ne they have never liked the sun. And they don't. They <laughs> that, 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 you know, that's I, amazing. I didn't tell them to lay out like go horseback riding. I've always done it in the early morning or in the evening because you know I didn't want the wrinkles. And the same thing with the beach. We've never used it other than mm. in the morning or in the, you know in the winter time. I do like <laughs> to use the word. I, I, I do you, you I like to use the word dude though I'll, uh, <laughs> dude you know so so that you know oh, keeps dude. me when, keeps me when you said, when you said that I thought of Sean Penn in um oh what movie was it where Fast he Times played from Richmond that's it that's it <laughs> dude. That point break point break we have friends who are in point break <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> so so i have a a, a question that's uh <laughs> you know it's like you know because you talk about the evolution of the spirit where where is the spirit headed oh good question um it, it, i think to another plane and again uh I, i've talked to other people about this and they start arguing with me and i'm i go hey this is my opinion <laughs> you know i uh, uh, i i'm not an expert on it Th these are are my beliefs you know um uh, i think the whole process of being human is to evolve to uh ever since i was a little kid i've always felt that there had to be more and um there was a, 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 a well, I'm showing my age here, uh, a singer named Peggy Lee when sure. I was a kid. And she had, she had a song and it was, um, is that all there is, my friend? Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking even at like seven or eight years old that like, yeah, well, you know, it, there's got to be more. And I think that's why I've done a lot of different things, too, is I, I'm always looking for that. Aha, uh -huh, you know, the and learning the fly um and the instructor i had uh she was a character uh but we were on the same wavelength as far as uh spirituality and she was the one that uh affirmed that uh a dream uh what's the word i'm looking for here a uh, recurring dream i had as from a young kid through my teenage years where uh, these guys with big black boots kick in the door and 
Uh, long story short is I think it was a past life experience right. and learning the fly with, with just Joanne, she encouraged it because she said the, from the first time I ever took the, the controls that I flew like an experienced pilot. And she, she uh, tied the two together for me. Yeah. So yeah. was it in a plane that they were kicking the door open or were they? Kicking no, I, um, in the dream, it it almost seemed like I was in Europe somewhere uh, in the 40s. Uh, you know, that's the image I have. And I, I was like recovering from something. Mm -hmm. uh, different. I mean, it, it could be nothing. It could be something that um, I think I had crashed a, as a pilot and, and was recuperating in like France or somewhere. Yeah, that's what it's. It feels and like. uh, yeah, yeah, well, and that, um, that right kind of a way. That yeah, way. and I I remember uh, like a door being kicked in, which I think was why you know the the Gestapo or the Nazis, whatever. Um, and I had that recurring dream, like I said, from from childhood. And you wonder where they come from. You know, is it a past life or is it just uh, um, brain synapses, you know, uh, of a movie that I saw somewhere, you know, kicking in? Who knows? Well, whatever it yeah. is, it, it's it's within you, right? It's it's affecting you. It, yeah. It, it has a uh, an energy within your being. And, you know, because that's not what's, in me you know that, that that's not um and it's not within a lot of other people it's a, we we have our own stuff right and yeah and so if that's part of what's uh like it, i mean it sounds like a, a, a trauma right i mean it sounds like something that it's like oh crap you know this is like <laughs> and, and and you remember it and you know they they could have come in and and you know killed you right because they right. saw you there and um and so it's like you remember that so that you know it's like your your soul is is wanting to either correct that you know it's like well i would never want to be in that position again you know right. like uh, <clears throat> i want to be you know in in control <laughs> that's so that, that doesn't and, happen <laughs> and i i do think that if there are past lives we do experience things that we need to uh make right to move forward if if that makes sense mm -hmm. sure. sure okay no okay. you have to you have to have a sense of doing things right because there is a you know, sense of doing things wrong there is oh yeah yeah and um you know you know yourself just from experiences in this life is when you when you see it happening again you go oh no no you know i'm not going down that path you know yeah. <laughs> getting off this train yeah right yeah Fox that's sled going 90 miles an hour down a mountain yeah. well, that, that's if you have that awareness right not everyone has that that awareness to see their patterns to see like if, um, if things and I think we're all guilty and I think we're all guilty of not seeing the patterns all the time because life is happening, you know, but I, I do think that when we uh, take the time and, and quiet our mind that this stuff comes to us. Uh, when I drive back and forth between uh, Wisconsin and Florida is I never have a radio on. And people go, what? You, you, I can't live in my car without my radio. I, I need that distraction. And I said, I don't. When I'm driving, I get inside my head. And <laughs> scary. I'm happy there. You know, um, uh, but good. I know I mean, I need to just. So many people are, are happy in their heads. So that's yeah, uh, I mean, either I'm <laughs> I'm designing something for a sculpture, or I'm working on a character for a, a story. Um, uh, when COVID hit, I found that my whole family, uh, we're all my siblings, we're all introverts because having to isolate wasn't an issue with us. <laughs> it was actually kind of it was nice in that you had an excuse. In, not to go somewhere or not to, I mean, I, I went, oh, probably about five or six weeks without ever shaving. 
And I finally looked in the mirror and I scared myself. I thought I better clean up. I, I looked, decided to never shave, even when it was not COVID. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I couldn't stand to look in the mirror at me. So it, it was time. <laughs> you became a you became a bushman. Yeah. I, I yeah. I, and part of it was I've shaven my head for 20 some years now. And it was just I wanted to see how much gray I had in my head, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it's still salt and pepper, uh, but um, you know the 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 beard has is gotten more gray, <laughs> as Jason can uh, attest. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, our 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 family. I'm only thirty, you know. As far as our family has has a history of of just yeah. going prematurely white. Yeah. <laughs> yes, same with that story. <laughs> yeah. He's always had this beard since about eighteen. And, he, and when he was little, he loved beards. He'd put on uh, yarn, dark yarn with- uh, Really? Yeah, with yeah. Uh, eyelash adhesive. And yeah, he was that was a character. Clear. Did a lot of wow. stuff when he was a kid. Um, I had a beard when I, well, I, even in high school already, I had a beard. And the, the main reason I had the beard is I just hate shaving. Uh, it, I had a girl come up to me in a bar one time and she looked at me and she said, I know why you have a beard. And I said, you do. And she said, yeah. She said, it's a mask and you're hiding behind it. And I looked at her. I said, let me guess first year psychology student. And her eyes got real big. <laughs> and she said, how'd you know? And I said, did you ever stop to think that I have a beard? Cause I just don't like shaving, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but right away she had this, this, you know, clinical reason, you know, that I was hiding. It's like, no, you know, I forget, you know, I'm sure you the same as you don't walk around going, I have a beard, you know, it, it's just, you forget, you forget your appearance. You forget that you have a beard and that someone is looking at you, uh, well, yes and no. You know, as far as I have a two foot long beard, you know, as as far as it's oh, I see. oh, okay, <laughs> so, yeah, that, so, so sometimes it, it gets in the way uh, of like you know, gotcha, you know. Okay, so I, didn't so I don't always big. forget about it, but but you're right. As far as it's it's not like a, it, it, it's not like you. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's just part of who you are, and you don't go. Yeah, I'm sporting a beard today. You know it. Yeah. Right. You know, Unless it, it, it gets just, caught in, you know. <laughs> well, again, you're you're a cir uh, special circumstance here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, for the for the most part, you're right. As far as it's not yeah. like, uh, hey, I've got a beard. Yo, hey, yeah, look at me. <laughs> I, I'm hiding behind it. You know, <laughs> I, I, I yeah. could literally <laughs> hide behind it. <laughs> well, actually, right. well, when you stood up, my first thought was, remember cousin It from. Um, <laughs> the Adams family, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you, yeah. if you pulled it up, yeah. that's like uh, way back in high school. Wrap it around. I had a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> way back in high school, I had a natural afro. Uh, I'm, I'm Italian. I had curly hair. Luckily, afros were in style at the time. Well, then that phase uh, went out and I ended up with a, a short braid in the back of my hair, you know, and uh I had someone ask why, you know, wh why do you do that? And I looked at her straight face and I said, you know how some guys do a comb over? I said, I'm going to do a comb forward. And I kept a straight face and she looked at me and you could tell she it was like, she didn't know if I was serious or if I was joking and you know, that's fine. Do <laughs> you decide? <laughs> that's great. So where, where is the, the spirit headed? Jim, oh, you you are our guide for that. Oh, we're I'm your guide. Plane. <laughs> we're in your um, plane. You're you're taking us okay. on that, that journey, right? As far as uh, you know, it's like you've done a lot of stuff. Do you think that that your 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 life like is it's kind of like like pieces of a puzzle that that kind of add up to like purpose to to something that that's larger? I do. And I think we're connected to each other. Uh, I truly believe that everyone we meet, we meet for a reason. And it's what we choose to do with them. Some people we just pass on in the hallway and say hi to or, or ignore completely. And then there's other people that resonate either on the same frequency or level that we are, 
or they're at least within tuning range that when they say something, you go, Oh, you know, um, and they raise you up. And I think that's our purpose is we're all supposed to help each other uh, raise to another level. And, and sometimes the levels are too far apart for, for one person to, to make. So there's inner intermediate steps that, you know, they have to meet so-and-so before they can meet, you know, someone else. Uh, I was lucky enough that uh, I was 18 and there was a knock on my parents' door and it turned out to be an old classmate of my dad's who had uh, been a, a navigator on a bomber during World War II and then went on to become a Trappist monk <laughs> and uh, spent 33 years sequestered in, in monasteries. And uh, he showed up on our doorstep. And what it was is he had actually gone up uh, for a class reunion. He got permission from, from the Vatican to, to go out and speak, and, and that's what he was doing. And he was a big influence on my life. And in fact, he's the main character. Uh, I used him, I should say, as the main character of that book. Uh, Jonathan. And, and coincidentally, it was his, his real name <laughs> <It> was John. <laughs> the, the, the Jonathan reference in, in the book was to Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Mm -hmm. But but the 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 uh, priest or the yeah, he was a priest um, uh, was actually John Bruder. Uh, he has since passed away. Mm. But yeah, uh, he he was the one that. I had gotten my first good camera and he asked if that's what I was going to do with my life. And I said, well, I'll never get a chance. And he says, what makes you say that? And I said, well, you know, it, it time, money connections, you know, it's it just not going to happen. And he grinned and he said, Jim, he said, you can do anything you want in this life, but you have to sacrifice something for it. And I wrinkled my nose, you know, I was 18 and he, he shook his head and he said, Jimmy, you don't have to give up something you like. He says, you give up poverty for wealth and ignorance for intelligence. He says, you give up something. And I live by that is what am I willing to give up for what I want? And a lot of the time it's, it's just, uh, it's physical time. It, it's, uh, you, you know, and again, that's, uh, when Jason asked, you know, uh, about, me doing all these different things is I wasn't raised in a family. So I had the time uh, to do this and, and the mean, I mean, it, it, all I had to worry about was, was feeding myself for most of my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you learn to live that way. And, but I'm time to create. Oh well, yeah. You know, and, and you, you can either sit around doing nothing or writing or any, you know, any, uh, any project, but it, it, everything takes time and energy, you know, and, and uh, where do you want to focus that energy? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it, that's, that's my philosophy anyway. Like I said, you know, people can argue with it, but it works for me. <laughs> Yeah, let's take it out in the parking lot, Jim. It's <laughs> yeah. uh, really like, yeah. Practical. <laughs> yeah. That. That, that part about sacrificing, that's... that's yeah, let's <laughs> yeah, let, let just go. No, like I, you said, it, 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 <laughs> and, you know, his example that time was you give up time with, drinking with your buddies to have a girlfriend. <laughs> and they go, oh, yeah, okay. You know, um, but it, it's all a trade-off of... of really what you want. Um, and the biggest part is deciding what it is you want and then, okay, how do I go about achieving that? Yeah. You know, I took up scuba diving because I was in a, a deep depression, um, clinical depression and scuba diving gave me something to look forward to and, and something, a whole new environment. I mean, suddenly you're, 
you're weightless and it's almost like a, a dream state where, uh, you know, especially if you're in the Caribbean, you know, you got 82 to 84 degree water, clear hundred you know feet of visibility and all these beautiful fish and you're weightless and you, and you're in, uh, if you do drift diving, which, which is a current, you don't even have to kick. You just go with the current and it, you swear you're in a dream because you're 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 flying with, without an airplane you know you're you're just floating along and it is it's uh a very uh an opening feeling but also you realize how insignificant you are um in the world you're one especially on a night dive because you can't see too much and you realize that you might be prey rather than predator. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it helps you shift gears as far as you're thinking. Does it put you more in, into a present mode as far as instead of like thinking about what, you know, either dwelling in the past or, or getting too far ahead in the future? Does it, does it make you like very aware, especially if you're, if you know that that every breath that you're drawing is is from a you know if, if something could go wrong you know yeah th that's a, a very good observation yeah um it does it it forces you i shouldn't say forces you it it allows you to just everything else melts away and, and you're one time uh i i was in a there was a surge it was rocking me about six feet forward and backward and I'm watching these sea fans floating back and forth. And, and even the fish, uh, they will, if uh, they will swim in the direction that they want when the, the surge is going their way. And when it the surge, you know, backs up, they just stop and they ride it. And, you know, it, it's a good example for people is if, if you're riding the wave, great. If, if the, undertow or whatever is pushing you back don't fight it go with it and and let it uh reset you you know let let you put you back yeah. where what's that rest a little yeah and you know um i make reference in the book that there are times where you know you get this urge you have to move forward you you, you know you're curious you want to find out and you start this ascent but along the descent you you get tired and you you need to take a, a break and you sit down for a while and you 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 appreciate the, the new view because you're higher. But after a while, you start looking over your shoulder at the next ascent again because, OK, I, I've, uh, I'm comfortable with this. Uh, I'm satisfied with it. OK, now what? And, and you make the next ascent. And again, until you get tired and you take another break. And I think that's what life should be. People get so caught up in the day to day that they don't worry about their spirit. You know, they, they, you know, they've got bills to pay and kids to, to raise and, and very seldom do people really get a, a chance to stop and go, okay, who am I? You know, am I, do the goals I have today, uh, which were probably from 10 years ago, do they still apply and and you know self assessment and again that's what why I do okay driving with without uh, radio on is uh, just checking stuff out. Their their self assess assessment uh, periods as far as like the the driving sessions. It's like you're you're going to check. I, them. I think so. I mean, um, it, it, they are for me. Uh, I don't know other you know other people deal with it in, in different ways. And, and I think a lot of people never stop to even think about it. They, they're, they're on autopilot from things they were taught as a, a youngster and they've never questioned. Well, my big thing is, after a couple failed relationships here is, okay, why, why do, does everyone want me to be married? <laughs> um, but it's the next <laughs> was that uh, yeah. yeah actually the depression was before I got married but yeah <laughs> um, oh what is it yeah anyway um, but yeah you know you uh, there are, I think you, you need from time to time 
stop and, and say, okay, the where I wanted to go like 10, 15 years ago, is it still a priority to me? You know, it, are these things I still want? Uh, a good example for, for me is I go back and listen to old music from when I was a teenager. And some of it's uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, I don't care when you play that. It's always wonderful. But um, the other music that I thought was so great, and I listen to it now, and you go, oh, I used to like that. <laughs> and to me, it's a, sign of gro- it's a sign of growth, is that you, know, um, you have a limited uh, experience when you're young, and as you get older with more experience, it becomes more refined, and you find – uh, things that work and things that don't work anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Giving fun. yourself permission to, to change, to, uh, yeah. to expand, and, to grow. Yeah. Shamanic yeah. Signs. And, yeah. What's that? I always say shamanic signs. Whenever, you know, you're not interested in this or that, or you're being nudged in some direction <laughs> that you listen because, you know, there's, Oh yeah. You're, you're, and even if you're in chaos and you know it's just too chaotic, you turn away because yeah. it's a demonic sign. Because there's something better for you. You've asked for a, a fabulous life, so why are you not living the fabulous life? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because you right. haven't taken the actual steps to create it. Yeah. Right? We all yeah. have to the, the, the reality. There was a, a joke I had heard one time about a, a woman, older woman, went to church every day and, and went up and, and lit a candle and, and prayed uh, to win the lottery. Every day she went to the, and she would pray to the Virgin Mary, oh, please let me you know, win the lottery. And she did this for years and years and years. And finally, there was a voice from above that said, buy a ticket. <laughs> you know, and, and it's true. Some people, you know, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this, but they don't take any steps in that direction, you know, to, to make it happen. And, and then they go, how did you do it? Well, you know, I, I didn't, you know, uh, I mean, a number of reasons, you know, it, it, everyone is different. Everyone finds their way well or not <laughs> i mean <laughs> well, um, I sometimes notice when people are asking to like win the lottery they're asking for a prosperous life and so winning the lottery is many things i mean it can be oh, yeah. family it can be happiness in general it can be finding love it can be you know that you take your your health into consideration your weight into consideration you know it's a it prosperous is many, many things. And so you want prosperity in all ways, then you have to, you know, really s- center yourself and start, you know, doing all the processing of it. Right, right. Um, you know, I wrote the book. I felt I had something to say. And and it was cathartic for one one thing. I mean, it, it, it polished, it made me even think of, okay, what I'm, you know, the way I live my life, is it, is it the way I want it? And I found that for the most part, yeah, it is. Uh, But I wanted to share what I've learned from uh, other people, especially this John, that you can do anything but there's always a sacrifice. And in the, in the book, I even make uh, the reference to uh, getting in a sports car that first gear gives you all kinds of power, but no speed. You know, first gear is just to get you going. Mm-hmm. Second gear gives you a little bit more speed, but you sacrifice some of the power. And each time you shift gears to a, a higher gear, you're giving up one thing for another. And if you look at anything in your life, you've given up, something for something else and it it comes down to priorities what what you want what you're willing to give up for what you want right speaking of your book where can people find your book jim uh amazon has it uh for for sale uh also uh, i have a website and i think (laughs) i i think i can take uh 
credit card uh, stuff there or on PayPal. Uh, but it's RigoniWorks.com. Uh, uh, R-I-G-O-N-I Works.com. Okay, so Rigoni, R-I-G-O-N-I Works.com. Everybody yep. go. And yeah. at, at Amazon, it's James Ragoni. Uh, yeah. It's under James Ragoni or the title of the book. Um, yeah. Uh, also, my brother, <laughs> my brother is also uh, on Amazon. He, he he's also uh, he he writes completely different from me, but he he's written a couple of books now too that are uh, uh, for sale on Amazon. Uh, his name is David. If anyone, he, he's um, Look for David. <laughs> well, he, right. he, he, he's he's the intellectual. Uh, he, his um, forte was um, academics. Uh, he he did his, his doctoral dissertation on how you come up with an original thought. Oh, that's cool. and, and and argued it to fruition, you know. And after it was published, um, he so a lot of smart genes in the family. Well. And different. Uh, I I tap both left and right side brain is uh, I'm I can be uh, my degree is in computer science, but I'm more of an engineer. I I like to know how things are, are made and, and what how they tick. And as a kid, I think my parents bought more things be, uh, in a store because I broke them taking it apart to see how it worked. <laughs> And luckily, uh, my parents were well for the most part okay with it, you know. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I as a they kid, were forgiving. I, well, <laughs> because you're still alive. I was gonna say they they they, they can't, can't beat you in a store, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't look good. <laughs> but well, they're um, Italian. They loved you probably. Well, and and I I think they knew my sense of. I mean, when I broke something, you know, they would shake their head and and. But I think they realized that it was my my curiosity. Um, I I wanted to know, you know. Curiosity is key. Curiosity yeah. is, is key is because that, that's is. what helps and, and that, that evolution process. I, I totally we agree. Um, going. Yeah. What's that? We all got to keep going. We all got yeah. our curious nature. We, we just have to spark it. Yeah. And I think when we get too complacent that that's well, uh, not good. <laughs> And it can shut down the body. So it does, you yeah. get afraid, yeah. the fear steps in, and then people get, yeah, you know, they 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 tend to do all sorts of quirky things then. And, and some people, I'm sorry, and some people are afraid to even try because, oh, people laugh at me or, so what? And um, I have a quote somewhere and it said, uh, creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. Right. Beautifully and, put. Yeah. And so, it, so our, our time is is uh, oh. is up. Yeah. We, we, we've come to the end of the program, James. Tara That's amazing. Jason D. McKean.com, RagoniWorks.com. Hey, <laughs> on the show, Jim. It was great. Thank you. Jim, and, 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 and if they go to my website and, and can't use the, the credit card, uh, leave, tell them, leave me a note and I can, or a phone number or something where I can get in touch with you. Okay. And you, Jason, your book, Amazon. My book. My book's on Amazon too, but yeah. Magic Yay. Channel to Row Reading. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With the wizard. Thank you for being on the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Transformations with Tara. Tara hopes this program brings guidance and insight towards a better tomorrow. If you have any questions or inquiries, or would just like to know more about Tara Sutphin's workshops and seminars or private sessions, please visit her website now at terrainsight.com. Until next time, many blessings. <laughs>